Hello, welcome to the Eugenics Podcast. I'm Patrick Merrix. I'm Marius Turda. How's it going, mate? It's going very well, thank you. You well? Yeah, very good. Had those amazing storms here in uh, Oxford yesterday, so feel very much cooled down and um, raring to go. So um, today we're talking about the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so we're relating it to the history of eugenics, of course. And um, so, so, so what's this direct relation we have here in this new story? This, is, this illustrates how new evidence keeps appearing, um, notwithstanding the research that's been done on American eugenics for the past 30 to 40 years. We continue to have new evidence coming up, and this relates to North Carolina's sterilization program uh, and how it directly targeted black Americans. So within the big debate we have at the moment about equality, social justice, racism, anti-racism, and Black Lives Matters, to have these being um, discussed publicly, it's extremely important. So a um, long history of, uh, of eugenics in the United States uh, and sterilization, uh, particularly of the um, black community. So what can you tell us about um, this history? North America is known in the history of eugenics as a, a key promoter of negative eugenics, including sterilization. So it is uh, the first country in the world that introduced sterilization laws uh, in 1907. So we have that long discussion about sterilization within American context and also within the debate about um, which categories of individuals are most affected by it. Was it criminals? Was it the mentally defective? Was it ethnic minorities? And now we have enough historical evidence to, to suggest that there is a, a, a widespread um, across the 20th century. It may have started with criminals and uh, defectives in hospitals and prisons, but it continued to cut across other segments of society. And by the 1930s and 40s, sterilization uh, began to include more and more ethnic minorities. American eugenics was always very keen to uh, emphasize um, its main concern with the white race and the decline of the white race. So very important American racists like Madison Grant were also important eugenicists. So you have that streak within American eugenics, that it's preoccupation with the decline of the white race, the protection of the white people. Uh, so within that, uh, you have a number of measures introduced and applied across the country. But increasingly, there is a big discussion, of course, about interracial relations, about segregation, about uh, separatism and about keeping the two communities apart, the black and the white. So we can see how slowly um, sterilization programs begin to include more and more ethnic minorities uh, during the 30s and 40s. Uh, so we have this example from North Carolina we started with uh, that sterilized about 8,000 people in the 1930s and 40s. And out of 8,000 people, 5,000 of them were black American, African American. So it's quite a significant number. Uh, but rarely would sterilization be applied to uh, African Americans uh, during the 1930s and 40s. We, eugenic programs uh, rather focused on institutionalization, segregation, uh, and sterilization becomes more popular, uh, ironically, after 1950s. So the sterilization of uh, ethnic minorities becomes more popular uh, during the 1950s and 60s. So um, we've seen in previous podcasts that uh, eugenics was related to other movements, um, birth control and feminism. But here it also says there's a connection with um, black emancipation. Um, so what's um, this about? It is important to note that at the, the beginning of the 20th century, eugenics was such a broad uh, church. Uh, it included various uh, ideas and various ways of dealing with a number of issues from uh, poverty to the protection of the race from cultural emancipation to the protection of mothers, from declining fertility to um, uh, building uh, better health infrastructures. 
So within that variety of ideas, it should not come as a surprise that many of the key figures in, in, in African-American uh, emancipation movement, such as Du Bois or Thomas Turner or Booker Washington or um, Thelma uh, Berlach Buse, um, actually used the language of eugenics to promote the emancipation of African-Americans. Uh, so you have a very cultural, intellectual language used by someone like Du Bois, who talked about you know how can we make black people be more um, uh, better be better at what the uh, natural abilities are uh, and does um, uplift them culturally and socially you have a more practical language of eugenics used by someone like uh Thelma Buza, who used it in connection to uh, controlling fertility and birth control uh, in the 1930s to help poor African American women to deal better uh, with their um, with their family situation, uh, so ultimately they did uh, did realize that uh, notwithstanding the focus of American national eugenics on race, uh, there is a possibility within that discussion to contribute with what can be called black eugenics uh, to promote the uh, betterment of the African-American community. And Du Bois put it there very nicely uh, in 1932 when he talks about birth control in the birth control review. Uh, and he says, we need to think about quality, uh, not just quantity, quality is what matters. So he uses that language and that uh, metaphor to express the possibility of um, social engineering uh, and cultural uh, betterment and improvement. Uh, so that's important. Um, so, but they also use it, and um, we shouldn't neglect that. We, they also use it to, to critique and counter, uh, uh, argue uh, claims put forward by white American supremacists and white eugenicists. So interestingly, with, with the black American uh, writers, they use eugenics to critique white scientific racism. So they saw that as a way to criticize alleged uh, 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 claims put forward by white eugenicists and white racists that black people are inferior or they belong to a different level of civilization and so on and so forth. So it's a very, yeah. interesting, um, in, a very interesting combination of ideas and forces. Um, but this is mostly um, during the early part of the 20th century. Things change um, after the 1940s. Yeah, so this is um, <clears throat> moving on uh, in uh, chronologically. So we have the connection to um, Margaret Sanger, who's also been in the in the news recently. Um, you know about this. So um, so what is this um, project? Yeah, that connects to the the discussion uh, um, that happened during the nineteen thirties between Margaret Sanger and her organisations and certain leaders. Uh, in the African-American community to help promote ideas of birth control and contraception amongst uh, African-American um, communities, particularly in the South. So this is one project that Sanga initiated and she got the support of the, uh, the African-American leaders. But obviously it was done within the racist understanding of the 1930s that of course you would have black ministers and nurses, but ultimately birth control could only be um, administered by white doctors uh, and at the family clinics. So the, the, the white doctors will always be in a way in a position of power. Uh, so that's a good example to see how there was a, a possibility, particularly with respect to birth control and contraception and family planning for eugenics to intersect with the African American community in a different way than what we uh, normally know um, that relates uh, uh, to sterilization and segregation and institutionalization. So as we return to the, um, the, the present day, we're, we're talking again about this um, North Carolina's role in the, in the history. So, um, so how would you like to uh, sort, of, sort of end this? It, it relates to an argument I, uh, I I noted uh, earlier regarding um, the increase of sterilization uh, of, of African-American uh, people, mostly during the 1950s and 60s. So you have the period of civil rights movement and of dismantling of white control and white power in the South. 
And at the same time, this is when sterilization becomes more popular with American eugenicists, with American health reformers, American um, um, hospitals. So it's a very interesting and less known uh, uh, historical um, uh, caveat that um, on the one hand, politically speaking, and socially speaking, and culturally speaking, there's so much towards emancipation and equality. And at the same time, this is the period, as this report clearly shows, that North Carolina was trying to breed out black people during the 50s and 60s through their civilization program. So there's so much to be, um, to be looked into uh, and move the conversation about civilization and about control and about uh, how the state operates both nationally and regionally and at a federal level as it happens in the United States during the 1950s and 60s. In other words, we need to move the conversation about sterilization, about eugenics, about family planning and about control of population to the 50s and 60s. Well, thanks, Marius, for another uh, well, very important uh, conversation today, I think. And um, well, thanks to everyone for um, for viewing and or listening to to this uh, podcast. And um, so, once again, Marius, thank you, and see you next time. Thank you, Patrick. Till next time. <laughs>